Legends, I hope you're all fantastic. There's been a bit of a fractal bonanza this week. The Axe FX3 has new firmware, which has a delay block update, a rotary block update, a sequencer update, a bunch of usability features, including the channels library in Axe Edit, and the FM3 has had the full release for the Cygnus firmware. I'm going to do a separate video on the FM3, but a lot of what I cover in this video is going to apply there. Both devices have brand new enhanced factory presets as well. So well, let's just get straight into some of the good stuff. I'm using a factory preset that I made called Leon's Live. I've done one thing here. I have swapped the factory cabs for my favorite user cab, LTTV Mix 7. If you want to try this one, it's available for free on Axchange. You can just kind of bump it in if you like, or you can roll with the factory cabs because I think they sound excellent as well. This is what scene one sounds like, and this is basically my happy place. <laughs> Alrighty, so just lots and lots of dirt with the USA lead mid gain. Let's say you really like that particular amp setting and you want to bump it onto a different channel in a different preset. You can do this now. You can still save entire blocks, but you can save individual channels. So if you come down here and you go save, you have the ability to save only the current channel. You could save it as Leon's live. And let's say you go through this preset and you also really like the cab block. We'll save that one as Leon's live. Uh, I'll do, I'll maybe just save that one as LT. And then you really like the parametric EQ, which I've already saved in here as live and the multiband compressor, like a TV chef. There's some stuff I prepared earlier. So you can take this and you can navigate to a brand new preset. And if you want to build a preset uh, using the channels library, it's incredibly fast. I love how fast this is. I'm just going to cable this up. I'll use the quick build function. I'll go input. I'll go output. I'm going to go app cab EQ. And let's pop a multi-tap delay in parallel, a delay block in parallel, and that multi-band compressor as well. So this is what my preset is looking like at the moment. And what I'm going to do now is just use the channels library to load up a bunch of my favorite stuff. So where's that Leon's Live? There it is. On channel B, I'm going to select a different app that I saved earlier, the Bandmaster. And on channel C, I'll use my favorite settings for the Cameron CCV. So now I have three amps. I mean, basically all I've changed here is probably the speaker compression and a few other things, but the boogies have a lot going on there. I'll bump my cab in. I'll grab my favorite live EQ settings. I'll grab my favorite multiband compressor settings. And in here, I'm going to bump in this live lead in here, which is pre-dialed in. For the delay, I'm going to bump in a circular style delay as well, but I'll bypass those. So uh, I don't know how long this has taken, but now I have a pretty functional preset just using the channels library. <laughs> Alrighty, that's awesome. Let's hear this massive live lead delay. Awesome, and let's hear the circular style delay using the dual delay. You can see no feedback on the individual lines. The cross feedbacks are 100 and the master feedbacks at 35%. There is a little bit of diffusion going on and the new compander is out of the circuit, but we're gonna play around with that in just a second. <laughs> I love the way that sounds. If we just kick the compander on and say bring the time down to about two milliseconds and the threshold down to about 70, it's kind of just going to soften the repeats uh, the way like a late 70s or early 80s delay would. Very, very subtle, but I find I like to be less subtle and just crank the time down, bring the threshold down, add a bit of more bit reduction, add some drive. And now we have this great crusty circular delay. It kind of reminds you of the character you would get out of an old Roland SDE, which I featured on the channel before. I also did a video with the Axe FX3 called Delay Designer, which kind of replicates the block diagram from the SDE. And a compander is a big part of that. Now we don't need it. We just, we got the compander in there. <laughs> Thank you. 
fantastic. If you like delays with a little bit of grit, this is really going to bring some fun in there. But let's go to, say, the band commander model. Actually, no, before we do that, let's go to the CCV because we have a compander type in the compressor block. This is what the CCV sounds like at my favorite setting. <laughs> So it's kind of like a really cool, thick, modified Marshall. Let's add a compressor block. We are going to use the compander type in there. And no, I want to do this. Let's go to compander. There's this control called transients. If you turn it up, it's going to enhance your pick attack. The opposite will happen if you turn it down. So let's just turn it up to about two and we'll boost the level on here as well. Check this out. <laughs> makes that existing thick sound even thicker, but with a nice pick attack on there. So that's a really fun one to play around with. What I am going to do, though, is go over to the band commander. I'm going to grab a different guitar. I'm going to try out the new DM2 and graphite copy delay. No prizes for guessing what those ones are based on. OK, I've added a compressor using the JFET comp delay before the amp, because I kind of like that with clean sounds. And I'm using the DM2 delay brought the time down to 300 milliseconds, and I've turned the mix up a little bit. Everything else is stock. So you can hear that degradation in there. And if you look at the compander settings, you can see low time and the threshold at about minus 60. They're really cool settings if you just want to add these to any existing delay sound you have. But with the DM2, it's really fun to crank up the feedback. And what I'm going to do here is attach external number one, which I've got my fractal EV1 down here to the master time so that I can do some kind of fun dive bomb stuff. So I've turned it up so that the master time's around 100%. And then I'm going to just drag it down when I play something with a lot of feedback. <laughs> And you could have a whole lot of fun with that, say, attaching it to a square wave LFO or something in that kind of general domain. Let's do this. Let's unassign this just for now so that we can hear the carbon copy model as well. I really, really like this one, just stock settings. I just kind of turn the mix up. I used to own a carbon copy, and it's one pedal I kind of regret selling until now. <laughs> that one, how the first repeat is really in your face and then they degrade quite quickly there. So that's what's going on there. The rotary block also got an update. So let's pop a rotary in here. I like to use it just straight after the cab. I actually haven't played around with this just yet. Normally, I just use stock settings and they sound fantastic. <laughs> But apparently the drive algorithm has been updated. So let's just add some drive here. Thank you. 
never added drive to the rotary before. I really like the way that sounds, but let's try it in front of the amp, in mono, kind of the way you would use a pedal. So let's try that. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome with the drive on there. I love that. It's kind of like a really nicely kind of lo-fi vibe on there with a low rate. It's a nice alternative to a chorus too. That's super cool, super cool. Speaking of super cool, I wanna show you this preset. It was shared on the forum by the legend that is Matt Pacone. It's called Vital Pans. And this is using a new feature in the sequencer. You can pause the sequencer and you can step it manually. So you can see we just have two steps in here, one to 100, one at zero. There is an envelope follower attached to the step function so that basically when you trigger the envelope follower, the sequencer is gonna step from maximum to minimum and then back. So uh, translation, anytime you have a bit of silence, this block here, the volume blocks balance is attached to that sequencer. So it's just gonna pan hard left and hard right. So you get this. Which is pretty amazing. And you can see when I did those fast drums, I didn't have any silence in there. I didn't re trigger the envelope follower, it stayed on one side. It's so fun. Awesome. You can have a whole lot of fun with this. And one thing that I wanna try with this is using it in the pitch block to basically step through different chords, like you could with certain like older 80s synths where you could play a single note and each time it's gonna generate a different chord. But I haven't played around with that yet. So if anyone has any bright ideas on how to do that, please let me know in the comments and I can probably save myself some time right there. So yeah, new delays, the rotary. I don't. I never used the drive before, but apparently it's been updated and I really like it. I think I'm gonna add drive to all my rotary sounds now. And those new delay types, as well as the compander options in the delay block are just fantastic, as you would come to expect from Fractal because the rate at which they update things is pretty unprecedented. Like I said, there's also new factory presets in there and the FM3 has Cygnus as well. So I will do some standalone videos for those. Thanks so much for watching the video and letting me noodle around with all these new things. I'm gonna spend some more time noodling around with those off camera. If you wanna support the channel, links to my Patreon and the music and merch that I make with my band Ragdoll. Have a great weekend. I'll see you all next time.